All right, uh, this video we're going to be going over how to use ray casting in order to click and drag objects around your scene. Um, so just to start off with, the only thing that I've done so far is to make an empty game object that has a click drag script on it. And I've just opened that up in Visual Studio. So empty script. Um, the next thing I want to do is to create some objects for us to drag around. And so I've just made a square sprite here and I will just drag in a few of them so that we have some things we can drag. Now, um, this scene is obviously very stripped down. We don't have any other game elements in here, but um, under the assumption that you are working within a larger context, we want to make sure that the objects that you can click and drag around are separated from the objects that you do not want to click and drag, and we do that by putting them on their own layer. And so this is a little bit different than tagging, but um, on a layer. So we want to create a layer and we can call this draggable. And um, then once we've created the layer, I'm going to select all of these three and then assign that layer. And so this is now, they're kind of separated out. Um, when we are detecting whether we have clicked on an object that is draggable, we will look at that layer called draggable. Now, Ray casting is a, um, a method where we can basically cast an invisible ray any direction we want. We'll be casting it straight into the screen underneath the mouse, and that ray can detect whether it hits an object that has a collider on it. Um, so, right, that's really important. A ray cast, in order to ray cast successfully, you have to be able to hit colliders. So um, on our squares, I'm going to add a 2D box collider so that we can detect it when we recast. So on all of these squares, they now have box colliders. Now um, let's go in and start scripting. So one of the first things I want to do is to uh, create a layer mask object. So public layer mask, not an object, a variable layer mask, draggable mask. And so once I've created this public layer mask, I'm just going to define it. So when you make a layer mask variable, it shows that your layer options and you can select the one that you are talking about. Um, and then what you want to do next is basically we want to say, hey, um, are we clicking? So we can use if input dot get mouse button down and then mouse button zero. That's the left click. Um, and then here are the lines of code that you need to do a raycast in 2D. And this is the same as kind of 2D versus 3D rigid bodies and physics and stuff, um, but we're using 2D raycasting. So first we'll define our ray as camera dot main dot screen point ray and then um, we will take the mouse position mouse position so we are making a ray that is at the location of the mouse position and if you remember the mouse position and the the screen position and the world position are kind of two different things so um, this basically converts the values and then um, hit cast hit 2d hit so we are creating our ray equals physics 2D dot raycast. And this raycast takes a few arguments. You can start to see where does the origin of the ray start? Well, it's at ray dot origin, which is the mouse position. And then which direction are we going to um, put it in? Well, by default, it is into the screen. So we're just going to take the default ray direction. And then how far, notice how every time we kind of hit comma, there's another argument that we can fill in. Um, well, the distance, well, we're going to send it to infinity because we don't really care about how far it goes. Um, if we were working in a 3D space, it might matter a little bit more, but for our game, it doesn't. And then the last argument that we will put in is this draggable mask. So tell it, um, cast a ray from where the mouse is, just straight into the screen an infinite distance long and look at this mask only. Okay, now what we need to do is 
if the hit dot collider, so hit dot collider is any collider that the ray has hit, um, is not nothing, then we will do something. So let's just start off with a debug.log hit dot um, collider dot dot name. We'll just print out the name of what we've clicked. So we've created a ray, we raycast it, and then we check if it hit something and we're printing out the name. So if I hit play, open my console, nothing, 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 and square, square one, square two. So we are indeed detecting hits here. So this is great. Um, so what I want to do is if I have in fact hit an object, I want to save a reference to that object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a game object uh, selected object. Let's make sure we spell things correctly. So if I hit something, then the selected object is equal to the hit dot collider dot game object. So we have saved the game object that we clicked on into a variable. Now, um, y'all know that I like to use booleans for things, so I'm going to make a boolean is dragging, and at the start it's false. Oops, false. And then we'll say is dragging is true. And um, so once we've detected that we've clicked something, we set our selected object to the thing that we clicked on and we tell our script that we are dragging. If we are dragging, then we can say that the um, selected object dot transform dot position. This is going to be equal to the mouse position. So um, let's so I don't get an error, I'm just gonna comment this out while we figure out how to get the mouse position very easily. Now, um, what's kind of fun is I can, we've been using void functions so far. Void functions don't return anything, but I can make a function that actually returns a value. And so I'm going to create a vector three function and call it mouse position. And then mouse position is going to, when called, it will return a uh, position, a new vector three position. And if you remember this from our very first class a long time ago, to get the mouse position in a world point, we're going to screen, uh, screen to world point, and we'll give it a new vector three value, input dot mouse position dot x, input mouse position dot y and then 10 because the camera is 10 units away from the uh, kind of what it's seeing. So if it's dragging, we're going to say that vector three position is equal to mouse position. So basically I'm saying vector three position is equal to all this, but I can um, call it in other places too now if I want. And now selected object dot transform dot position is going to be equal to position. So we are getting the mouse position by calling this function that is returning a value to us. And then we are setting our selected object position to that. And then we, so currently we can't put the object down. So what we want to do is check if we release the mouse. So if input dot get mouse button up, mouse button zero. We will just set is dragging equal to false. And then it should stop setting the position. So let's save this script and test it. Play. And ah, there we go. So one thing that you can kind of notice here is that if I click on the corner, it like pops, right? So to match the kind of the position of the squares is set to like the middle of the square. So this is something this like offset is something that we can address.
a little bit later if you are not a fan you want to be able to grab something by the corner if you want to um, so we can fix that a little bit later but um, there we go we have our clicking and dragging working 